fuck expectations. Yeah, but also don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Sextras. Where we talk about sex and all the extras. I'm Honey and my favourite thing about Christmas is the music. Yes, I love Christmas music. (laughs) I think that's what's like getting me so in the mood for singing at the moment as well. It just makes me think of like... When we would sing at the school. The carol Yeah, I miss it. I was literally, like, my heart yesterday. I was like, oh my god, the carol concert. I loved it so much. <laughs> and everyone hated it. Yeah, I quite liked it. I liked all the concerts. They were fun. But yeah, I love Christmas music too. But I'm Maria. <laughs> <laughs> and my fun fact... Well, my favourite thing about Christmas is maybe the lights... And, yeah, like, the lights on the Christmas tree and stuff. Mm. But, like, the lights around the streets, I just think they're so pretty. I really like yeah. it. It makes me, like, really want to walk and, like, be outside. Yeah, I love, like, Christmas markets. Yeah. Oh, with those little Christmas wooden market. huts with, like, the fake snow on yeah. it. And, oh, wow. Yeah. Are you feeling quite holiday mood? moody or not really yet. I actually have, have been the last few years I really wasn't feeling it but I feel like this year everyone's really excited for Christmas because it's like finally some happiness in the world <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually quite excited for Christmas this year too yeah even though it's kind of like I don't know it just seems really empty and non-Christmassy in a way I also feel really Christmassy in a way I don't know yeah because I feel like people want an excuse to celebrate People yeah, really want something true. to be excited for. It's like the royal wedding. They always place it at the right time <laughs> to get people happy and excited. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, we have a non-Christmas episode for you this week, unfortunately. But we thought we'd, you know, mention a little bit of Christmas since it's our first December episode. Just get everyone super hyped. Maybe we should do a Christmas remix of our theme tune. Oh my god, (laughs) yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) With like bells. I actually love when when like people make themed things like you know when you were young and all the tv shows would do the like the christmas special i love I that love shit. I Chris- actually that might be my favorite thing about christmas is what, the christmas, christmas special i literally live for that shit i love it <laughs> the gavin and stacy one last year beautiful you're a fake english person okay i'm not english <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, and like I'm trying to think what other shows do it that I watch. I it's just not not that I watch things regularly, but you know when you rewatch something and they have a Christmas special mm. and you're like, oh, you know this is the Christmas episode. You're like, oh yeah, wow. oh I love that shit. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, it's so good, <laughs> and oh, I love when people start to wear their Christmas jumpers and they look. So, I don't even have a Christmas jumper, but I just think people are really cute when they wear their Christmas jumpers. <laughs> and the whole party season around Christmas. Obviously, we can't have that this year because you know, except the vaccine's on its way. Except <laughs> it's not going to make any difference. But you know, anyway. <laughs> um, I love going to Christmas parties and people with like their all the valve oh all the velvet people wear at Christmas <laughs> and all the sparkles and glittery clothes and sparkly makeup. Everyone just really makes an effort at Christmas. Mm-hmm. They love it. For sure. It doesn't even make any sense because no like probably none of those people actually give a shit about Christmas. It's just something you do at Christmas. Yeah. But it's lit. But it's the I'm not Christmas complain. spirit. Yeah so yeah I also love when everyone starts to feel Christmassy that's the best thing and I've been really depressed because people haven't been feeling that the last few Christmases but now it's all it's all happening you know 
I love Christmas chocolate as well. Sorry, that's the last thing I have to say. <laughs> like the Maltesers, Christmas chocolate, that kind of thing. When they have special things just for Christmas. It's oh, amazing. yeah. I just love to theme things. Like, just theme everything. And I love it. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's finally December, guys. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, this week, I was going to say this year. Uh, this week <laughs> much we did one episode a year <laughs> maybe then people would actually listen yeah <sighs> <laughs> um yeah so this week we're talking about expectations in relationships versus friendships or mm. just platonic relationships in general and yeah we're going to start with a segment where we ask you guys what you expect of your significant other but not of your friends. Also, this episode came around because we're always talking about things and we're like, why do we expect that? Because I would never ask that of you. Yeah. Yeah, this episode has basically come about from us expecting crazy things from... Not crazy things, but like <laughs> expecting things and being annoyed when they're not... When our boyfriends aren't doing it, when it's just things that we don't really get why we expect them in the first place. So it's just basically us wondering about all of that shit. Yeah, kind of the same as all of our episodes. Yeah. Just wondering why we are <laughs> why we are. So, okay, Maria, do you want to start us off with the segment? Yes. So, um, that they deal with my attitude slash me being bratty. <laughs> yeah, I so feel that. I don't get why we take everything that's going wrong in our lives out on our significant other. I feel like I do that less. Like I, I talk about my troubles less to my significant other than... Yeah, but it doesn't have to know. be talking about it. It's just the general vibe that mm. you impose on them. Yeah, no, that's actually true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, like, grumpiness goes towards things, like, towards them. Yeah, that's so true. Even if it's like such a small thing you're just in a bad mood you'll just take it out on them and I get so annoyed at my boyfriend for doing it to me but obviously I do it to him too but <laughs> yeah. I act like I don't so that's what's important <laughs> so fake it till you make it <laughs> um three people is that what that means yeah three people said text me every day yeah did do yeah I mean my boyfriend would never not text me every day, so if he did, and that would be kind of weird. But I guess I just don't expect it because it happens. But actually, sometimes yeah, but when also, he doesn't, I'm like, why not? Yeah, but also you're in a long distance relationship, so yeah. it kind of like it's kind of the whole. It makes relationship. a lot more sense to expect that. I think that is sort of a reasonable thing. Mm-hmm. I think maybe it's more like obviously you'd expect that, but why do we expect? our boyfriends when it's not a long distance relationship to text like to text every day when you wouldn't your friends i don't know i can't relate to that i'm sorry but can't you though like when in relationships when you like in relationships other than your relationship now that it wasn't like relationships that haven't been a lot or even just like situationships and stuff where i guess it's not the same but do you not expect them to text you all the time or every day I only really have my ex as an example and we texted all day every day it was too much (laughs) like it took over my life (laughs) also so many people have said I mean no not so many people but a few people have said to do an episode about like toxic relationships and I've mentioned it so many times so we will do it at some point just Mm. to flag that but yeah that was toxic but apart from that... But do you think it's toxic to expect someone to text you every day? No. Not every... Like, one text a day, I think that's reasonable. Mm. So easy. Yeah. It literally takes two mm. seconds. Mm. All you have to say is, hey, I hope you're having a good day. Hey, have been thinking of you, but I'm busy or whatever. Yeah. But it's so weird, the whole texting thing, though. Because if... Uh, like, we were talking about uh, about earlier how... With your friends, you just don't expect them to text you every day. And if they don't, you don't think anything differently. Like, you don't think they love you any less. You're not like, oh, why are they not thinking about me? Like, do they, are they annoyed? Like, why why haven't they responded in four hours, blah, blah, blah. Whereas with 
a significant other or someone you're talking to, you tend to deep those things a lot more. Like, you think everything mm. means something. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I still think it's a time, like a stage in a relationship kind of thing. As in, when we started being friends, even though we were so young, I would have wanted you to text me every day. Yeah, but, like... I don't know, I just st- still don't think it's the same because I-, I think that there is this expectation with your re- in your relationships that you're, like, texting sort of throughout the day, like, keeping each other mm. updated, blah, blah, blah. Because you want to know that people are thinking of you. Yeah, but if if my friend does the exact same thing, I wouldn't get annoyed. Do you- and it's, it's exactly how, like, like, if, let's say I started, I was friends with someone and then I started dating them, and I knew that they just weren't very good texters, all of that stuff, and, like, they just weren't texting me back. And then I started mm-hmm. dating them, and I feel like be, when they were my friends, would yeah, it would annoy me if when we're together or we're not. But I, maybe it's because you expect to, like, go up in the priority list. Yeah, it's a priority thing. Because if you... I mean, not really with you, because we have a podcast together. If mm. another... If Will was thinking of me all the time. I don't I don't want him to be thinking of me all the time. I just don't. Like yeah. that's a weird thought. <laughs> and if he was thinking of me all the time and was always texting me, I'd be like, stop. Same with my boyfriend though. If he's obviously I want him to think of me like at least once a day, you know, I want to be a priority. <laughs> but I don't want it to be all the time and then he's always texting me because but I, I don't know, I think I'm just a really bad texter though, so then probably I annoy everyone else. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, the next one. <laughs> <laughs> to give me affection. Yeah, we were saying, imagine you were really affectionate with your friends, but people are though. Yeah. But, but I think there is a fine line because imagine you're just constantly just see because my this one my boyfriend said to me he said he sees me and he wants to touch me if i'm in front of him he will not stop touching me if i'm doing the washing up he will walk up to where i am just to touch me yeah i'm so like that i always just like want to be around my boyfriend and like touch him yeah but i'm i'm like it's enough of your there you can stay right there that's fine like I can see you don't need obviously I want to be touched at different points in the day just not all day every day so imagine right now you're there and literally like grabbing you like stroking yeah, your I hair yeah I never do that with my friends but I definitely do it with my boyfriend like I'm all, I always want to touch him and him to like be touching me sounded kind of sexual but like not in a sexual way (laughs) yeah but i guess it is a sexual thing because touch is very sensual and intimate i guess yeah i don't know like i'm not gonna come and kiss you on the neck but i'll kiss you on the cheek Mm. and like i probably won't kiss you on the top of your head because there's just certain things that are designated to certain... Yeah. But that's such a weird thing. You know when you're, like, sad and you're just kind of like, oh, I just want to cuddle? Yeah. Like, I'll think that sometimes and, like, I don't know, I'll tell my boyfriend that, wanting him to be like, oh, yeah, I wish I could be there to give you a cuddle, you know, like, reassure me. Because all I really want is a cuddle from him. Yeah. Not a cuddle. And then he'll be like, oh, I need to, uh, like, get a cuddle from your mom. I'm like no and like same with friends like it's kind of like yeah i want i want affection but just like not from you like i don't know it's just a really different yeah no actually i was thinking about that the other day like if you're crying and you just want a little cuddle Mm. but i don't know i'm not really that kind of a person that wants a cuddle when they're crying (laughs) yeah but okay it doesn't matter if it's like whether you're crying or not but my point is like you know when you when you're kind of like, oh, I just want a hug, but you know, like, you just want a hug from mm. your boyfriend. Like, it wouldn't be the same if it was your friend. Yeah, but maybe that's because we're just afraid of asking for it. Maybe if it was normal to ask your friend for a cuddle, it wouldn't be weird. No, because I, I feel like I wouldn't feel weird about it at all, but I know that a hug with my boyfriend is, like, a really different thing. 
not a hug from with with my friend. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. We understand this one. <laughs> See me every day. Yeah. Lol. Maria <laughs> can I relate. relate. I relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one's such a weird one to me because I really am such a. I really don't like being around people very much. So. Mm. I don't know why it's so weird that I like I want to see my boyfriend every day and I want him to see me every day but my friends like not really yeah I think and it's not that I don't like hanging out with my friends or anything like that but you know it's like it's it's just not I just don't need to see you every day like I really don't yeah maybe it's well firstly I think with you it's because you lived with him and you're so used to it and you live in the same city so it's kind of like, well, there's not any real reason why you shouldn't see him every day. Other than to have your space and do the things that you need to do. But that option is available to you. So I think knowing that it's a possibility mm. and not having it, you kind of want, you want it more. Mm. What do you think, though? Like seeing, do you think that in a relationship, it's bad to see each other every day? Or do you think it's like fine do you think it's like an okay thing to to expect yeah I think it's an okay thing to expect as long as you're both on the same page I think if I if I lived in the same city as my boyfriend and we didn't live together I'd probably not want to live with him I'd probably want to live in different yeah so what places and see each other like three times a week yeah is your ideal not every day (laughs) because I want my alone time (laughs) I just want it (laughs) But maybe if we lived in a reasonable sized apartment and we had space where we could have our own space and not have to see each other. But that's not reality for me right now, so. Yeah, but what's the ideal frequency of seeing your significant other for you? I mean, yeah, I think three times, three or four times a week, I'd be happy with that. Mm, okay. Or like every other day. Mm. Well, even if it's more than that, that's fine. As long as I have at least one day a week where I can be by myself. Yeah. Or do my own thing if we live together. But I think it's reasonable to want to see your significant other every day. There's nothing wrong with that. It's nice to know. It's nice for the other person to know Mm. that you want to see them. Well, yeah, that's why people move in together in a way. It's like, so you can have someone to come home to. Like, that's what people always say in the movies. Like, I want someone to come home to. Yeah. I think that's why it's kind of hard to think about right now as well, because it's not just uh, you go to your job for eight hours a day, you come home, and you only see them in the Mm. morning and evening. You're just literally with them all the time. Yeah, Yeah, no, that is true. (laughs) But, yeah, I think if I had a nine-to-five job, which I hope I will never have, but if I did... (laughs) I would probably live with my boyfriend. <laughs> not because I can't bear being with him. I'm really not saying that. Like, I love him and I love spending time with him. It's just, <laughs> I think there's a limit of time you can spend with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you just need, I, I don't I think I would just go insane. Mm. I only saw one person all the time. For example... I only see myself all day, every day, going insane. <laughs> Literally texted Maria being like, please, can you come over? I need some contact. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay, next one. I don't want him to take drugs. Yeah, we had a, a couple people said like that like they expect their significant other to not do drugs, but they wouldn't expect that from their friends. I feel so seen by this. Yeah, I I think this is quite common actually. Mm. Like, but I don't get why. Literally yeah. why. No, I think I kind of get why in a way. Maybe. No, because we were saying I'd be oh, yeah. so devastated if you died. Yeah, actually I don't get it. I was going to say like from a safety point of view. As in like you get worried about them obviously. But I don't see why that wouldn't be the case with your friends. But I... Maybe it's a survivalism kind of thing, like the animal inside of us wants to proc- pro- 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 re- <laughs> reproduce. So, so we're like holding protecting on. our mate. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly bet you Me. that's the reason why. 
Yeah, maybe. Because friends, okay, I'm sorry, this is kind of jumping ahead, but friends aren't an essential part of survival. Obviously, loneliness is a massive issue, but pure survivalism, pure hunter gatherer kind of shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need fr- What What are your friends going to do? I mean, I guess they protect you and they're the people you go hunting with. But they're mm. not the people that are going to reproduce the whole human race with you. Mm. Yeah. So, wow, I just cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. For reals. Yeah, and I think weird. it's a kind of like a FOMO thing. <laughs> what do you mean? Because we're always saying how we want to be involved. You don't want them to like have that massive experience without you. Yeah, but it's not even without you. What do you mean? Like, you can still not want them to take drugs even when you're there. Yeah, true. I know so many people, so many couples that fight because, like, one of them took drugs. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Together. You both want to have taken the drug together rather than well, one of... Because it's always horrible when one of you's sober. Even if it's just with drinking and the other one's drunk. You wouldn't want that. I would hate that. Yeah, I guess maybe it's just for, like, people that don't do drugs that date people that do do drugs. Mm. Yeah. But, I don't know. But it is kind of this intense feeling of fear and, I don't know, what, like, I feel so consumed by it. Like, anytime someone that I really care about, regardless of if it's friends or not, but it is just heightened with a relationship yeah but this is about expectation though like you wouldn't i would never tell my friends like yeah that that they can't do drugs i would never even be annoyed at them or anything whereas like if my boyfriend did drugs and stuff like i don't know no I, i was gonna say that i'd be annoyed but i wouldn't obviously he can still do whatever he wants but there would still be this, like, I still feel like I have the right to be upset that he did them. Yeah. You know? Whereas if it was my friends, I guess I would still feel that kind of right in some kind of way, but not not to the same extent. Yeah, because I think it might be a moral kind of thing as well, because you do expect the person that you're in love with to have morals that are aligned with yours. But oh my God, for some yeah, reason maybe you're this is more like lenient. COVID thing. Yeah. yeah. You're more lenient with your friends. Yeah, you're way more... Yeah, maybe th- this just comes back to the leniency with your friends. And in terms of morals as well, because you, you don't... You're not confronted with it all the time with your friends. Firstly, because you don't want to see them every day. <laughs> and secondly... As we <laughs> Yeah. And secondly, because... Yeah, you're just not as involved in their lives in the same way I would never dream obviously I I would like intervene if I was really worried about you I would never dream of telling you how to live your life but for some reason with my boyfriend actually I don't really think I tell him how to live his life there are things that I'm like why do you do that please don't do that I'd rather you didn't do that I'm not going to sit there and be like, you have to do this. Mm. But I mean, maybe I do do that and I just don't even (sighs) realise. Anyway, moving on. The next one is text me loads. So kind of the same thing. Mm. Yeah. But do you guys not just get really, I don't know, I'm so fed up with technology. I'm so fed up with texting people. But it's not about, like, this is what I've been trying to explain. It's not, it's not about texting. It's about what it means. It's like, when I get, when I say I expect my boyfriend to text me all day and, like, let me know what he's doing and all of these things, it's not, I don't know, it's not even because I care that much. It's just more out of, like, I want to know that he's thinking about me. I want to know that he's, like, yeah. wanting to talk to me throughout the day rather than actually wanting to like have a conversation or whatever do you know what i mean i don't know it's just more about what it signifies yeah and with and what i think is so weird is that i feel that 
the need to be like reminded of that validation all the time with a significant other which i think a lot of people do in in the way that you like say like i love you to your partner all the time or i don't know not that everyone does that but more than i'd imagine you say to your friends i guess i think a yeah. lot of the time that would happen but and i don't know a lot of the things you're willing to do as well yeah so the last few ones eat me out <laughs> eat ass <laughs> and have sex with me i mean i i'm hoping you don't expect your friends to do these things <laughs> yeah yeah so obviously like we weren't really talking about the sexual things because it's kind of That's obvious you'd expect line. your um, <laughs> your significant other to do the sexual things but not your friends so yeah makes sense unless it's like a polyamorous <laughs> friends with benefits kind of yeah. situation <laughs> in which case yeah go for it <laughs> unless you're all swingers <laughs> Anyway, so hopefully you guys understand. We kind of also just wanted to know that this is like a part of human nature because it is so integral to the way mm. everyone thinks about relationships. And it's just like, why? We really want to unpack why. We really yeah. just want to know the intimate <laughs> details and like psychology of why we are the way we are. So, yeah. So, Han, are there any things that you expect from your boyfriend that you're kind of like, why? Or just anything that we haven't talked about already? I want him to really consider my position in the world and the situation that I'm in. But I don't just mean I want him to think about me. I want him to analyse how I'm feeling and really think about why I'm feeling certain way and I'm not saying that my friends don't do this but the thing is is if they don't do it I'm not going to be like why do you not think about it like that Mm. but with my boyfriend if he's not thinking about why I'm like why not (laughs) is the thing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I really want him to think about but is this like in arguments or is this just in general like you just no, expect just him in to general be thinking life. about your feeling oh yeah life. no I just want him to think about like what's going on I want him to know what's going on in my life how that's impacting my feel like I want him to think <laughs> about how that's impacting my feelings because I really genuinely do this to him and I really genuinely think <laughs> Why is he being like this? It must be because of this and this what's going on Mm. in his life. And oh, this is what he's going through. So he must be feeling like this. Obviously not assuming, just kind of like thinking through it and Mm. really like trying to understand him. Mm. And that's what I expect. I think, but I don't think that's unreasonable. That's just because I want to be understood. Yeah. So you expect sort of like a higher level of empathy in some kind of way. Yeah. From your boyfriend than any friend yeah shit yeah that makes sense i feel like that sort of comes along with the territory of a romantic relationship like kind of how we were saying like before we started recording how we were analyzing why why these expectations and we just kept going around in a circle yeah and all of that shit a lot of the expectations and a lot of the extra heightened feelings just come from the fact that the relationship is just sort of a different level of yeah. intensity of intimacy yeah i don't know how we were saying that in dating and when you start friendships like there seems to be this process that you follow in relationships especially like it's really structured yeah. like you're seeing each other then you're doing this and then in the third date you can finally shag and like you know there's yeah. all these rules all this like structure to it and it just seems to have like more levels than a friendship because in a, in a way a friendship also has those steps even though though they're not as marked or whatever yeah they're not you don't like climb as many levels there's no not that many milestones i guess and titles to get so then i don't know the relationship keeps increasing and therefore the intensity and all of those so all of the feelings become heightened but it is still a thing with 
being understood because I guess with friendships you have acquaintance, you have friend of a friend, you have friend, and then you have best friend. Mm. And I know people hate the term best friend because <laughs> it's exclusive, but do I give a shit? No, I don't. It's just, that's just Maria's the people this that, title. Yeah, it's just the people that don't have a best friend and they're just sad about they're it. They're salty as fuck, yeah. but... <laughs> but, no, okay, well, this is interesting because do you think then that it's a deeper connection with boyfriends or girlfriends than with friends because I really don't think that it is. I think it is. I just think it's a different I connection. Do, no, okay, yeah. That, it's not deeper. It's, it, but I think it's different and deeper in a way. But, oh, no, no, no. Actually, no, yeah, no, maybe it is just different. I think that you have the exact same, if not more, of a natural, inherent understanding of who I am than my boyfriend because I've known you for longer and it's more just like a natural thing in your psyche of knowing intuitively who I am what I'm like how I feel in certain situations because you've had the benefit of time and observing those things I've been friends with you for nine years yeah but then I think maybe it is something that you expect of your friends but it's just something that as we were saying before happens so naturally that you almost don't look at it in the same way like like the stages yeah because the because friendships seem seem to happen so much more seamlessly and naturally you overthink a lot less things you're not you're not like clinging to all these little things like in relationships yeah and all these expectations like you're not building all these things because it's almost happening like seamlessly almost like this thing of empathy like your friends just do it seamlessly because we know you so well. Yeah, and I would never call you out on it if you didn't do it, that's the thing. Obviously, if it was a massive issue for years and I felt, oh, Maria really doesn't understand me, why am I friends with her? Mm. I would do something about it, but it's the fact that so the reason you have... the security of being misunderstood. Like, yeah, because the reason your- you have these expectations and the reasons that you act on those expectations is more about having an absence of it and do you get what I'm saying because Mm. that's how attachment styles are formed as well is the reason you have these feelings and expectations is from having an absence or an excess of something in your childhood Mm. so you only feel a loss if you have an absence of it Obviously, if that makes sense. So I don't think about it in the same way with friendships because, yeah, it's not in my face all the time if there's an absence of it. Okay. Mm. If you're not texting me every day and if I'm not seeing you every day, then I'm not going to be thinking about every day how you don't understand me. Okay, yeah, uh uh-huh. Whereas... Seeing as I am texting my boyfriend every day and I FaceTime him every day, I am more going to be thinking about trying to understand him. And I think I do, I try to understand you too, but it, yeah, it's just not as conscious of a thing. Yeah. Which is weird. Why are we so hyper-conscious then? Like, it's such a weird thing. Well, actually, you know, I think it is like a scientific thing that you're whole immune system and your whole nervous system is like on guard when you're falling in love it's like a bodily reaction that's so interesting because you kind of let your guard down so then it is a vulnerability thing as we were saying before we started recording as well that's why it's called falling in love you don't fall into friendships Mm. you drift into friendships but it's not like a sudden overwhelming shift Mm -hmm. it's more subtle and also not to get like too academic about it but discourse is literally (laughs) created by there's a thing people recognize it as a thing and then they give it a label and then inherently people have to fulfill that label to keep it going Mm -hmm. so then that is kind of the whole culture we have around relationships is like these things have been observed over time and all these things are expected over time so then they're given a label but also the culture is always shifting so now for instance 
we suddenly have this new technology. And then, of course, already the culture that we had around relationships then has to adapt to the technology. But now, we're, because we're confronted <laughs> with the technology all the time, we want to be confronted with our relationship all the time because we have the means to do so. Mm. So you're like constantly having to adapt. Yeah. Whereas I, I don't know if like 20 years ago they would have had the same expect. Like they couldn't because they couldn't text. Not yeah. 20, like 30 years ago. They couldn't have texted them all the time. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Like, th- obviously, the ex- uh, the things we expect from our significant others have, like, increased so much with time. Yeah. Because, yeah, and as you said, now it's, like, confronted. You, uh, uh, you're being confronted by it, like, all the time. Yeah, my granddad wrote me an email and he was saying how, like, people in long-distance relationships, you literally just couldn't communicate unless you planned a phone call weeks in advance and set a time or you sent them a letter and waited to hear like back whenever that might be and hope that the letter got there whereas now it's like instant you you just want instant gratification I think Mm. that's the problem and you want to feel understood and I think people have this expectation in relationships that you're you should instantly try and understand everything about someone but Mm. You can never fully understand someone because people are always changing. Mm. And you can't just suddenly learn everything about someone. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think also part of it comes from, like, this idea of of ownership mm. and stuff. And obviously, like, even though things have changed a lot throughout the times, I think it all sort of stems from this idea of ownership and, like, how the idea of marriage and, like, in the patriarchy and all of that shit like how it was just women were property yeah (laughs) and obviously well i don't feel like property personally yeah um which very grateful for thank you very much for everyone's that that's fought for me to be here in this position right now (laughs) but i think that this notion of ownership still like really lives on in relationships even now nowadays that is yeah it's it's like your person that no one else is allowed to touch and like you're the only one that gets to know them in this way and you're the yeah i don't know like even yeah it's it's sort of this exclusive title that you belong to this person or like you are the special thing to this person you have a claim think, over their lives mm, and i think uh, like the idea of prior like going up in the priority list like comes from that it's just this whole Mm. thing of i don't know i think i can relate to that i have this whole idea of i know my boyfriend in a way that no one else does and like that makes me feel special and i think that's also like where the expectation comes from and all this disappointment and all of these things because you see this person in a plane that no one else gets to see yeah you set yourself up for failure Mm. and that's kind of why I I just don't think anyone's relationships should be separate from their lives because you kind of start to have an awareness of how other people see your significant other and you start to understand that other people actually do like know them on a deeper level Mm. and it's not just you that has this like magic claim over their lives you have this perspective yeah and it's kind of nice to believe that no one else before you ever understood your significant other in the way that you do or that no one else existed in their lives before you (laughs) did but that's so unhealthy to think that way Mm. yeah do you not think that with this idea of like being really involved in each other's lives though that is also part of what creates this like huge different expectation as in Mm. your friends like they all are obviously part of your life but they're not like they don't make it's not the same like they you don't think about them in in a as like an extension of you almost yeah not that not that people do think that about their partners or like it's like a rule or that's the way it necessarily is but what i mean is like we tend to obviously think of romantic partners as partners rather than friends Mm -hmm. as friends so like yeah but i don't know it's kind of difficult because i do i think that friends 
are such a reflection of who you are Mm -hmm. and I would see my significant other's friends such a reflection of who they are too so I do think it is kind of the same that they are an extension of you I just don't think that's how people look at it and that's the problem is that people don't see friends as being on the same level Mm. it's more like a hierarchy yeah it goes romantic relationship family and friends Mm. but I don't think that's necessarily how it should be and then when you have kids as well it shifts it's kids romantic relationship and then family and friends but it doesn't have to be that way I think it's just because we have such a tendency to conflate two very different things together when I really just do think that friendship and romantic relationships are so inherently different in the feelings Mm. and they're just not comparable and I think that's where people get confused and that's why people get jealous of like their significant other's friends and family and them spending time with them because they think it's like a competition kind of thing but it's not because everyone needs multiple people in their lives to function as human beings (laughs) and that's what makes them who they are so it's kind of Mm. I think it's a respect thing as well it's respecting someone enough to grant them the space and the ability to have these multiple and like varying relationships in their life Mm. and it's an insecurity thing too in being like secure enough in the relationship to not question those other relationships and not worry about what that means for your relationship because it is just entirely separate Mm -hmm. and obviously um, that's not to say that if your significant other is like flirting with one of their friends constantly and it seems like it's posing a threat to your relationship that you can't feel anything because it's a separate thing or if your significant other is like putting their mum's opinion over your opinion that's not that like you getting angry about that isn't valid because I think it's it's about mutual respect Anyway, I feel like I'm going off on a tangent, but yeah, ultimately it's all about respect and security. Uh And you can't have security in your relationship unless you value and respect the other person and they value and respect you. Yeah. And you get out what you put in. Mm. Yeah, actually about this like getting out what you put in thing, just sort of a note, I think like a lot of the time we can create expectations from like the actions that we're taking ourselves so yeah let's say i want my boyfriend to text me all the time so like i'm texting him all the time so i'm like oh why the hell is he not texting me Mm. all the time and then i'm like oh it's because he doesn't love me or because of this because of that and i think a lot of the time our mind can assign like all these reasons and like kind of punish ourselves in a way like be like oh it's because you're not good enough or like it's because they don't love you or it's Mm -hmm. because it means this when it doesn't actually mean those things at all and you're just like setting these expectations on people based on how you show love and based on like how you have learned to communicate and all of these things when maybe they have different ways and I just think that it's a lot more it would be a lot more productive to sort of have a conversation about the sort of things you expect maybe like why do you expect them yeah from each other and like for example like this is kind of a revelation i I had literally this week how i i keep saying how i i just don't believe a lot of the time when people tell me like i love you Mm -hmm. or i care about you and all of these things and it's it just comes from this idea of like no because if they're not doing these things as in like okay yeah he can say oh i love you but he isn't spending every day with me or Mm. whatever and I'm like that's how to me that's what showing love feels like so yeah you can say I love you all you want but you're not showing me yeah and that I don't know you can villainize someone a lot in that way from expectations I just imposed on him yeah and when he was showing love it was just 
a different way. Yeah. And I think that maybe when you sort of like sit down and examine the, these expectations and think, okay, why do I actually think that? Why do I think that it means this? Yeah. Does it really mean this? Or like, could it be this? I don't know. Maybe should I ask? Like, maybe ask like oh how do you show love because i show love in this way yeah and sometimes when you do when you don't do those things it makes me think that you don't love me and then they're like oh no but i show love in this way do you know yeah. what i mean yeah and i think just because someone expects something of you doesn't mean you have to do it you yeah know? and you can't establish whether it's right or not for you to be doing it unless you have those conversations mm-hmm. you just can't understand where the other person is coming from mm-hmm. and i think often it's a it's kind of like a a way to make ourselves feel better like oh no but I'm doing all of this and I'm showing him that I love him more Mm. than he is showing me that he loves me Mm. so I'm the better person in the relationship and therefore they're not as good as me because they're not ticking all these boxes that I think are the ways that love should be shown and I think a lot of the time like myself included I'm very guilty of being like oh but I'm showing you that I care in this way Mm. because that's the way that I want to help you and that means that I'm helping you but then there's also more nuance to it because it's like well is that the way that they want to be helped Mm. no it's not but also just because that's the way that they want to be helped doesn't mean that that's the only right way for it to happen you can find a compromise just because they expect to be treated a certain way and you expect to treat them a certain way. Mm. Neither of those is the right or wrong answer. It's just how do you meet in the middle rather than you Mm. sacrifice part of yourself or the other person sacrifices something. Because I know people think that's what compromise is, but it's not. It's self-fulfillment for both parties. Like, And I think that's another issue as well is with rights and feeling entitled to things is we feel entitled to what we want because that's who we are as people (laughs) we think oh just because I want something and especially in the society we live in where we have all this like instant gratification capitalism (laughs) literally everything we feel entitled to what we want because it's most of the time it's so easily granted to us or seemingly so easily granted to us Mm. but feelings and expressions of feelings and actions no one owes you that Mm -hmm. no one owes you their love no one owes you their time but we think that they do Mm. because that's just the culture that we live in (laughs) yeah yeah and we we like with the label boyfriend and with the with all these different labels that we assign to different things and how we were saying like the levels like that is like a different level of like the next thing that you're entitled to the next Mm -hmm. thing you're allowed to have you know and yeah I don't know I think we set a lot of rules in relationships that we don't in friendship Mm -hmm. that I don't know maybe it's sort of like we should examine like why are we doing that it's sort of yeah and I think a lot of expectations obviously attachment styles come from childhood but a lot of expectations are set up in childhood most people have parents that will give them something they want when they want it (laughs) most children have parents that grant you love or affection in certain ways so that's what we think we're entitled to and that's what we think is natural it's just having this understanding of like the multiplicity of people's lives (laughs) and experiences not everything that you want is right not everything the other person wants is right Mm. or wrong (laughs) I don't know I just think expectation is something that it's a feeling and unless you voice that feeling until you voice that feeling you can't understand how ridiculous it might seem to someone else (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's kind of this unspoken thing that same with assumptions like when you voice it you're like fuck do I really think that what's wrong with me (laughs) (laughs) and I mean with with this whole like expectations it's like such an unspoken thing that that's why it's such like it causes trouble because then that's what causes disappointment because you're like in your head you're like expecting someone to do all these things and then they don't do them and then they you 
think that they're like doing something horrible against you when they're not they're just not living up to yeah. this like person that you made up in your head this kind of thing. narrative you've made up of how things should go in your head and also that's yeah. literally why like fairy tales and shit and that's why the media and films and television and everything we consume is so important because it builds all these unrealistic expectations mm. there's so many things you see in the media that just don't happen in real life and people wonder why we have unrealistic expectations mm. Like, it's I love Disney, cause... but <laughs> so problematic. And it's weird because it really does completely come all from the title. Because if you think about it, okay, let's, like, remove the titles. Let's just pretend, like, okay, there are just some people that you are friendly with, but you don't, like, have sex with and whatever. Even though it's obviously more than that. Mm. But if it was, like, more about the person or yeah. whatever, I don't know, I feel like when you're starting to, let's say you meet someone mm-hmm. or whatever, you don't, like start acting one way or another straight away like it's not like you're like you decide okay this is gonna be well no maybe i guess you do maybe when you decide like whether you want to date someone that's when you like start acting different yeah because how do you decide that but no because it's it's not the feeling it's not just about you Mm. it's labels have to come like it's a consensual (laughs) thing it's from both parties it's not like you're my boyfriend okay now you have to do all these things it's like no we're in a relationship and the same with friendships you you don't just decide someone's your friend and the other person's like i hate this person Mm -hmm. but then what do we think like oh do we just think expectations altogether are bullshit or like is it fair enough to have expectations like is it healthy to have expectations yeah I think it is healthy to have expectations definitely but I think it depends what they are because there's all these basic human needs that we need like <laughs> clearly <laughs> like feeling understood feeling loved mm. communication and we talked about this in the falling in love episode I was talking about bell hooks and the seven things that she names for love wait do I have the book yeah oh this is something i underlined i'm afraid that we may be raising a generation of young people who will grow up afraid to love afraid to give themselves completely to another person because they will have seen how much it hurts to take the risk of loving and have it not work out i'm afraid that they will grow up looking for intimacy without risk for pleasure without significant emotional investment they will be so fearful of the pain of disappointment that they will forego the possibilities of love and joy i'm telling you bell hooks is god (laughs) okay so this is the things to truly love we must learn to mix various ingredients care affection recognition respect commitment and trust as well as honest and open communication so i read this book earlier this year but i'm honestly gonna reread it again like today because it's just (laughs) so good (laughs) but yeah so there's all these basic things that we need so obviously these expectations come from something Mm. they come from a rational place Mm -hmm. But obviously, like anything, they can get out of proportion if you just ling- let it linger in your mind and don't yeah. voice it. Yeah. So I think it's reasonable. It's mm. very reasonable and it's very natural to have expectations. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you can kind of deny yourself that need. And I don't think that's healthy. How do you know, like, when you're crossing that line of, like, am I asking for too much? Because yeah but when to me let's say something might seem like really not unreasonable and something that is okay to expect from someone Mm -hmm. but it might not be yeah but then i think that's where communication comes in Mm. but then what if like like who's right do you know what i mean like yeah but i don't think anyone's right you just have to like, it's about understanding the other person mm. and respecting their perspective, but also mm. respecting your own perspective mm. and then being able to find a way of, like, reassuring them or finding some kind of way you can compromise to make mm. them understand that those... I, obviously, it's way easier said than done because <laughs> yeah. we're clearly not... That's why we're having this conversation. It's because we think we have unrealistic expectations. 
so we don't have the answers but yeah I do think it is just about voicing it because Mm. there's so many times where like I've voiced things or my boyfriend's voiced things and then until you voice it you can't hear it from the other person's side yeah but it's kind of fucked up Mm. but it is just completely the label it is but I mean, it it is the label, but it also is just this weird feeling. Like, I don't get... Mm. It's so, it's, I guess it's so ingrained that we just, like, have all these weird fucking feelings around it. Yeah. Maybe this is just why more and more I realise spiritual people are just, like, doing it right. Because you have to find a balance of your emotions and your rationale. You have to have that respect for your emotions but also not let your emotions and your instincts dictate your life Mm. and you're like people are either super in tune with both or one side completely dominates the other and I think my rationale (laughs) completely dominates the other side so that's not good and Mm. I don't think I have expectations because of that like I literally I think I like suppress my feelings because I'm like no no but my boyfriend is like well I want you to have expectations of me (laughs) please have expectations of me I'm like no no (laughs) (laughs) so yeah it's just about that balance I think (laughs) what about um like sex expectations (laughs) <laughs> like I guess I don't know I just kind of wanted to have a chat about how when you because we've we've kind of talked about this before how in a relationship you sort of obviously like there is just this expectation that you're gonna have sex I'm I'm not saying that that's like a wrong thing to have like yeah yeah I mean pretty standard part of a relationship mm-hmm. but um this is like weird idea of like when you're in a relationship like you're always expected to like be down to have sex and how like mm. sometimes not to make our boyfriends sound rapey in any way shape or form but like <laughs> yeah <laughs> how sometimes they'll be pushing to have sex and like we can tell they want to like it sounds like a group activity i just mean like us individually as people yeah. but we as the collective <laughs> um, <laughs> like, we can tell like uh like that he, they want to have sex or mm-hmm. like that he wants to have sex and and like you're not really in the mood but mm-hmm. whatever like he he keeps probing and probing and then you kind of just give in and i think yeah. like a lot of the time women feel that's just like they just give in and it's like kind of what we were talking about in the Miranda episode and how uh labels are restraining our sexual freedom episode we use sex I guess sometimes in like some kind of way but or like to gain some kind of power but also it can be this like expected thing that like we kind of don't feel like we can say no and we have said this before like not knowing how to say no and it's not in that deep of a way when I talk about it like this it's not in like a sexual assault kind of way but in this idea that yeah like (laughs) but it's just expected of me I will do it respect yeah like I will do it and then but then a lot of the time like we feel like our boyfriends won't do the same like when we're horny and we're like trying to do it and they're like oh I'm not in the mood and we'll just like let it go yeah whereas like and they won't give in whereas I think we a lot of the time will just give in and yeah and it is a power thing and it is a feeling entitled thing and we all know Mm. men have that entitlement more than women yeah because of how they're raised yeah and like as women we just let them get away with lack of entitlement yeah like we let them get away with it and we don't respect our own yeah exactly voice and our own wants yeah but i mean i'm not saying like i didn't want to do it and like by the time like we're having sex i do want to be doing it you know yeah but it's sort of this like i don't put my foot down because i just think it's like a like yeah it's something that's expected of me like i'm like we're together they're entitled to your body because they're your boyfriend yeah (sighs) 
And you're entitled to whatever you think you're entitled to because mm. that's yeah. the label. But I, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I just wanted to talk about this idea of like expectation and like entitlement over someone's like body mm-hmm. and sexuality and stuff and like how that can sometimes feel scary. And like this idea of expectation of like, oh, it's the third date, like, I should give it up now. Or, like, mm-hmm. oh, it's the first date, if I fuck him, then he... I don't know. It's, like, all these like, dating expectations and all yeah. these rules and all this weird shit, and especially, like, around sex and what that's going to mean about you and how much you should give up, how little you should give up, how... what that means about you and... Yeah, and it's all just about being connected, really knowing in yourself what it is that you actually want. Mm. Because I think women are scared of how they're going to be perceived or how they're going to be treated if they value what they want. And that all comes down to how we're raised. Literally, (laughs) women are not taught in the same way to go after what they want Mm. as men are. Because it's just not, it's just not the society that we live in. (laughs) And I think women really feel that disconnect. And that's not to say we're not guilty of upholding those kind of hierarchies as well, because I think we're very aware of those things existing. But as we were saying, we still will give in and have sex if it's not what we want. (laughs) Because I think it's just easier to do that. Mm. And it's also about this fear of loss. Like, what are you going to lose by putting your foot down Mm. and respecting yourself (laughs) okay well i feel like we've said enough yeah i think we're just (laughs) kind of like deep about like i feel like we all just end up like talking about why women are so damned in society because everyone will just like tell them that it's either this or the other thing and it all just comes down to that i mean it does though (laughs) (laughs) there's a reason that it always comes back to that is because that's just how it is we're trying to raise awareness of that and we know we get a bit deep and we know our podcast is probably targeted a bit more towards women but yeah, like, sorry we keep fucking talking about the female experience all the time. Sorry, that's the only experience we can <laughs> relate sorry, to we because we're joiners. forced into this presentation of gender, you know? <laughs> 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 but no, honestly, though, if you are like a man and you're listening to this, we're so grateful for you and we hope that you can relate to these things too because obviously there's so many expectations mm-hmm. that men have to fulfil too and that's a whole other emotional side of expectations we didn't get into of gendered expectations of how people should act but I think that's a very real thing and we could definitely talk about that if that's something that you guys are interested in Mm -hmm. if there's any guys that want to come on our podcast we really want to start having more guys on yeah and another thing that relates to this and the whole sexual thing is we want to talk to some asexuals and how you deal with that expectation of sexual Mm. beings in society (laughs) and fuck expectations yeah but also don't (laughs) (laughs) we hope this was enjoyable for you hope it's not too deep and if you enjoyed please review us on apple podcasts or podchaser and rate us subscribe follow share us it everywhere. yeah you can follow us on instagram binge all our other episodes yeah you know it's coming up to christmas christmas holiday <laughs> <Treat yourself. laughs> you have all this spare time we know you do while you're cooking that christmas meal you can listen to our podcast as a christmas gift it's you can so send festive. a link to a friend <laughs> a like... free gift like what more could you want <laughs> <laughs> Give your friends knowledge and sex dress this Christmas. <laughs> if you <laughs> if you want to give us a gift, then you can write a review. Or oh you can God, email yeah. us. We love it when people email us or DM us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just do something to help us out. We would very much appreciate <laughs> it. If you know someone who spirit. wants to sponsor us, we would yeah, love to. Please sponsor, sponsor us. <laughs> Thank you. 
And follow us on everything, social media. Sexist podcast. Sexist podcast, yeah, basically. And you can find our website, www.sexistpodcast.com. And that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 You've been listening to Sextras, presented by Honey Jane Wyatt and Maria Jose Hayodatiyi. Produced by Mabel Productions.